John Dalton. John Dalton's atomic theory laid the foundations of modern chemistry. John Dalton was born on September 6, 1766, in Eaglesfield, England, UK. Both of his parents were Quakers, although Quakers were Christians. They were seen as dissenters by the established Church of England. As a result of these, John Dalton's higher educational opportunities were restricted to dissenting places of education. His father was a weaver, who owned a house and a small amount of land. John Dalton was an intelligent child who took an interest in the world around him and tried to learn as much as he could about everything. He attended his village school until he was 11 and then began helping as a teacher. At age 15, he started helping his older brother, John, to run a Quaker boarding school in the town of Kando. All the while, he continued teaching himself science, mathematics, Latin, Greek and French. By the time he was 19, he had become the school's principal, continuing this role until he was 26 years old. It seemed that the school students enjoyed being taught by Dalton, one of them recalling. The boys were all glad to be taught by John Dalton because he had a gentler disposition and besides, his mind was so occupied with mathematics that their fault escaped his notice. In the first half of 1793, aged 26, Dalton took the position of a teacher of mathematics and natural philosophy at Manchester New College, a dissenting college. In 1794, he wrote his first scientific paper, which he called Extraordinary Facts Relating to the Vision of Colors. This was the first ever paper to discuss color blindness. Dalton had recognized the condition was hereditary because he and other members of his family had it. Ultimately, Dalton's theory of color blindness was wrong, but as he was the first person to ever research it, the condition became known as Daltonism. After this, he published more research papers in the physical sciences looking at heat conduction, gas expansion by heat, the properties of light, the aurora borealis, and meteorology. In 1800, Dalton resigned from the new college, which was in financial difficulty and began working as a private tutor of science and mathematics. In 1801, Dalton gave a series of lectures in Manchester whose contents were published in 1802. In these lectures, he presented research he had been carrying out in gases and liquids. This research was groundbreaking, offering great new insights into the nature of gases. Firstly, Dalton stated correctly that he had no doubt that all gases could be liquefied provided their temperature was sufficiently low and pressure sufficiently high. It then stated that when its volume is held constant in a container, the pressure of a gas varies in direct proportion to its temperature. This was the first public statement of what eventually became known as Gay-Lussac's Law named after Joseph Gay-Lussac, who published it in 1809. In 1803, Dalton published his law of partial pressures, still used by every university chemistry student, which states that in a mixture of non-reacting gases, the total gas pressure is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of the individual gases. Dalton's work distinguished him as a scientist of the first rank and he was invited to give lectures at the Royal Institution in London. His study of gases led Dalton to wonder about what these invisible substances were actually made of. The 
The idea of atoms had first been proposed more than 2,000 years earlier by Democritus in ancient Greece. Democritus believed that everything was made of tiny particles called atoms and that these atoms could not be split into smaller particles. Was Democritus right? Nobody knew. Dalton was now going to solve this 2,000-year-old mystery. He carried out countless chemical reactions and in 1808 published what we now call Dalton's Law in his book A New System of Chemical Philosophy. If two elements form more than one compound between them, then the ratios of the masses of the second element, which combine with the fixed mass of the first element, will be ratios of small whole numbers. For example, Dalton found that 12 grams of carbon could react with 16 grams of oxygen to form a compound we now call carbon monoxide. He also found that 12 grams of carbon could react with 32 grams of oxygen to form carbon dioxide. This ratio of 32 is to 16, which simplifies 2 is to 1, intrigued Dalton. Analyzing all the data he collected, Dalton stated his belief that matter exists as atoms. He went farther than Democritus by stating that atoms of different elements have different masses. Dalton assigns atom 1 to be hydrogen, 2 nitrogen, 3 carbon, 4 oxygen, 5 phosphorus. He then shows how molecules might look when the atoms combine to form compounds. For example, molecule 21 is water, OH. 22 is ammonia, NH, and 23 is nitrogen oxide, NO. Modern readers will see that Dalton got molecules 21 and 22 wrong. This is less important than the fact that Dalton's system of atoms and molecules is almost identical to how we might represent them today. For example, Dalton's molecule 28 is carbon dioxide, Today, we could still draw carbon dioxide this way. Amedio Avogadro soon published work that built on Dalton's and corrected some of Dalton's errors. For example, Avogadro said that water should be written H2O. Unfortunately, Avogadro's work was ignored for many years, partly because it disagreed with Dalton's. Dalton's atomic theory states that 1. The elements are made of atoms which are tiny particles too small to see. 2. All atoms of a particular element are identical. 3. Atoms of different elements have different properties. Their masses are different and their chemical reactions are different. 4. Atoms cannot be created destroyed or split. 5. In a chemical reaction, atoms link one to another or separate from one another. 6. Atoms combine in simple whole number ratios to form compounds. Although we have learned that atoms of the same element can have different masses, that is, isotopes, and can be split into nuclear reactions, most of Dalton's atomic theory holds good today, over 200 years after he described it. It is the foundation modern chemistry is built upon. Humphrey Davy wrote this about Mr. Dalton. Mr. Dalton's permanent reputation will rest upon his having discovered a simple principle, universally applicable to the facts of chemistry, and fixing the proportions in which bodies combine and thus laying the foundation for future labors, his merits in these respects resemble those of Kepler in astronomy. Dalton did not marry and had no children. He remained a faithful Quaker all of his life, living modestly. In 1810, 
he declined an invitation to become a member of the Royal Society. In 1822, he was elected without his knowledge. In 1826, he was awarded the Society's Royal Medal for his atomic theory. In 1833, the French Academy of Sciences elected him as one of the eight foreign members. In 1834, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences elected him as a foreign member. When he was 71 years old, Dalton had a small stroke or paralysis as it was known then. A year later, a most significant stroke left him unable to speak as clearly as he once could. In 1844, when he was 77, another stroke hit him. He died aged 77 on July 27, 1844. His scientific reputation was so great that when his body was placed in Manchester Town Hall, it was visited by more than 40,000 people paying their respects. John Dalton was buried in Manchester in Hardwick Cemetery.